While Baja may be a road trip capital for vacationers, it's part of our journey to drive the entire Western Hemisphere. Over the next six weeks, we'll be seeking out some of the most remote and diverse regions of the second largest state in Mexico. At times equally daring and awe-inspiring, this exploration of Baja will make you want to hit the road tomorrow. From the tourist hubs to the secret coves hidden from ordinary wanderers, Baja is an overlander's dream. Our first international objective was to get gas and get groceries. Following that, we will be tackling our first overland route through the Laguna Salada Flats, hopefully to find an oasis. We would soon find out that our international phone plans were not yet activated and we would have to do the entire route without a map. Ready to go. Got the new Falcons aired down to 15 in the front, 20 PSI in the back, and we are heading inland towards the Baja Oasis. so much easier than a U.S. border crossing. We had all the paperwork we needed. Everyone there was super helpful. Even the guys that didn't speak English were super helpful. They were friendly. It was like, no, you're just you're just in Mexico, and you're like, okay, well, now I know nothing. I'm lost, and we don't know very, we know very little Spanish. And it was like, it, I think it hit us like a train. <laughs> it was just after sunset when the very bumpy road finally brought us to this oasis. We paid the camp host more money than we were expecting, and then he took us to our private campsite with its own hot spring and its own palapa, and we fully understood what we were paying for. This is the Guadalupe hot springs. And for our first night in Mexico, it felt like absolute paradise. Look at this wonderful creature with fresh guac, chippies, and OJ. After paying the hefty fee to camp at our private hot spring, we opted for the more budget-friendly Riverside Camp. We're taking it easy before we attempt to cross the rest of the Laguna Salada Flats the next day. An oasis. An oasis. Oasis deserves. Oasis number two. A Corona. Yes. With lime. And when you're drinking Corona out of the can, it's uh, 
customary to use squirt lime. And for the people that like more than one lime, you can have like extra squirt. You can have all the lime you want. And the lime hangs out on the, on the can. Cheers. Cheers. Fire. After enjoying coffee and doing a thorough bolt check of the truck, we're making a bit of a late start today, so we'll have to make up some time across the sand dunes. We would continue our overland route, hugging the eastern side of the mountains that frame the Laguna Salada Flats in hopes to find another oasis and a set of ruins of an old villa. We're going to have to use some navigational skill to find this, however, as it was not on our map. You need to get picked up? <laughs> yeah. It should be fine. It's there. Yeah, like it's, really, it's, it's very deep right there. It'll be a test for the new tires. Let's go! That was great! Easy! Also in two-wheel drive. Oh! I can't get it out. Okay. Okay, do you want me to? Here. Okay. Good lord. Ow! <laughs> oh. Oh gosh, it's, it's so. It's like under my nail. I can't even see how it's. Oh, you gotta watch me step. I accidentally kicked it. Ow! <laughs> Ow! Oh. Ouch! Well, that was a bit more of an intimate encounter with the flora than I was anticipating. It seems we've picked a perfect time to come to Baja. After a recent rainfall, everything is in bloom. So we are driving through what appears to be a former lake bed in search of ancient ruins and our second oasis on this overland route. Well, we got another 20 minutes before the sun goes down, so we are losing light fast and hoping to find this spot to camp at. Four star. Coming from Canada, traveling across these sand dunes feels totally different and we are loving it. We're gonna have to find camp before it gets dark so we can continue our mission to find these oases. Since there's seemingly no one else around, finding camp is as easy as pulling off the track and putting our top up.
like the tracks stop here. Doesn't really look like a road anymore. <laughs> yeah, I say we fly oh, the drone. there are tracks there. But... What do you think? Should we fly the drone? Yeah. Let's... Well, we saw her. Parts of a river and no tracks and no palm trees. And palm trees are always a giveaway of an oasis, it seems. So we're gonna carry on. We're not gonna waste the whole day on this one, but we're gonna try a little bit harder. We had been seriously affected by the idea of a desert oasis, and now it was not something that we could easily give up on. but it's also kind of like quicksand. It's hard to tell if there's actually any tracks that went through here recently. It kind of looks like there's two right here, but where they go, it's hard to tell. This is the way we have to go though, otherwise we have to go like 60 miles back in the other direction. lost traction in this sand, it's really wet. And I could try another line, but there is nothing to winch off around here. So we're gonna go down even further and see if there's another spot that we can get close to the river. This was an opportunity for me to really listen to my gut. And I was not getting a good feeling about driving anywhere near this river. A heavy rig, nothing to winch off, and only two max tracks is not the formula you want when you're by yourself in the desert without service. So we would carry on to find a more solid and safe route, however still without a map. Let me correct myself. We had a very old screenshot of the route we were trying to take and the topography maps of Google that showed no road. Between those things and the tracks that were before us, we had to navigate about 60 miles before we would reach our destination. It was at this point that things started to get interesting and we had to forego our plans of finding the oasis and the ruins because the most important part was getting back to civilization with enough fuel. So far, so good. We're new to international overland travel, and our objective is to make intelligent decisions so we can continue this trip through 17 countries. And we were going to have to find some new navigational skills very quickly if we were going to get out of this desert without spending another night here or calling for help. So we went from no tracks to so many tracks we can't figure out what's what. But we will. We will. We will use our keen sense of navigation and orienteering. For now we're just lost in the desert. 
As it turns out, we had found our way onto an old Baja 1000 route, which was a good sign that we were heading in somewhat of the right direction. Hopefully, we didn't have to do another thousand miles. Okay, well, all three signs point that way. So, I guess follow the signs. successfully navigated our first Baja desert and oasis and Stacy found a flower. Heck yeah, the sun is setting. The truck did phenomenally well. Very happy with the performance. Some of y'all questioned why we were bringing a blender. Well, we've been waiting a long time to make margaritas on the beach. And Stacy's 30th birthday was the perfect opportunity. The morning brought sunshine, rich, dark roast coffee, and a sense of adventure as we would continue traveling south to visit an off-road legends museum and hope to find a beach with some solitude. What we didn't find in solitude was found in friendly Canadians that we met and shared delicious moucheladas on the beach with. Thanks, Mark and Jean. It was awesome hanging out with you guys. The sun was high and the sand was soft which meant it was time for our first Mexican beach drive. And yes, friends, it felt as good as it looks. If you know us by now, you know we can't sit still. So we were already on our way to another beach to explore some real solitude.
Okay, so we have one very important immediate task to take care of. Opening these coconuts. If we had a drill, it would make this a lot easier to drink the water and just drill a hole in it and put a straw in it. However, we don't. So my first idea is a screwdriver. I'm already imagining the comments on how to do this properly and how dumb my ideas are, but just let me have my fun, okay? The, the backup plan is the machete. <coughs> so we're gonna start with uh, large flathead screwdriver. Um, I don't anticipate this going that well, but we're gonna try anyway. Yes! There you go, my love. You have no idea how long I've waited for this. Mmm! <laughs> mmm! That's so good. Mm -hmm. That's tropical. Look at that. Oh. And then once the juice is done, we can crack them open and eat the meat. Ah, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Man. You cannot put that flavor in a can and have it taste like it. No. Now that the coconut water is gone, you get to enjoy my favorite part is the meat. You don't want to hit it too hard because you don't want to shatter it. You want to have big chunks, so I'm going to go to hit it like not too hard, not too soft, just, just right. We'll see if we can get it. That's how you do it. Look at all that. <laughs> wow, we're just watching a pro at work here. <laughs> that is the best part right there. Superfood. Mm -hmm. These are definitely the moments that people hope for when they travel to Baja. Oceanfront, all by yourself. Except we didn't have to pay $1,000 for a resort, and we have this all to ourselves. Today we would continue driving southeast in hopes to meet up with some friends and do an inland route to Catavinia. Oasis. Ah! <laughs> okay, well, we 
still don't have butt flaps, everyone, as you can tell. I just got wet. This meetup was actually scheduled to happen about three months ago in Arizona, so it was full of excitement to finally get to spend some time with our other Canadian friends who have also been traveling Baja, living life on the road. Today we are making luxury fruit and coconut smoothies. Oh, yeah. Perfection. I think the first one I'm gonna do just, do you think pineapple coconut or mango coconut? Hmm. Still thick. Ooh, this one's good. Is the coconut more blended? Yeah, more blended, more flavorful. You can definitely, this tastes closer to a pina colada. Nice. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Huge, huge texture upgrade. Yeah, nice. <laughs> yeah, like it. I like the the less banana notes, Good. but still creamy with the banana. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hu huge point jump. <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Megan, what are we having for dinner? We're having Indian curry with rice and sourdough naan bread. Dang. So cool. An overlander's dream. <laughs> yeah. This desert was filled with treasures, and it didn't take long for us to start exploring and finding them. Really? Yeah, it's sort of like, how would you describe the cactus bark? Wow, we are not <laughs> Turmeric, garam masala, um, Chili powder, um, what else is in there? Curry powder. Chef oh. yeah. gold. <laughs> Form it into like a small, like flat disc. Roll it out till it's like half a centimeter thick. Gorgeous. That's like, that's, gorgeous. yeah, gorgeous. gorgeous. Impressed. Nice. Gorgeous. Yeah. It's okay, I might have part Indian blood in me. <laughs> you, you will never know. Moth curry. Moth, moth rescue. Right, well, this is a vegan curry, so we're, uh, we're actually We need not. to take them off. <laughs> I'm actually not vegan, so you can leave my name. There's one right there. Oh, too. Stacey wants to have her moths. Yeah, you can. We're gonna keep them on the side, though. It's an aperitif. <laughs> oh, that makes sense. Oh, there's another one here. <laughs> there's another moth in the cast iron. No. Oh, get, oh, that one's <gasps> fried. <laughs> What's uh, the nutritional must, value of a moth? Wait. Oh, yeah. How's that? Yeah. And if you want to be a, a real Indian, you have to flip things with your hands. <laughs> right now. Silence of the moth. Right. <laughs> oh, you'll eat it. <laughs> that was easy. Oh. No! <laughs> Why did that? Am I gonna get copyrighted for this yeah. smooth jazz? <laughs> oh A feast! This is awesome, wow. So excited. Yay! While the beaches are certainly beautiful, the desert has a uniqueness, the silence, the feeling that is only its own. It felt like kindred spirits setting up for our second night at camp, but there were some underlying feelings brewing between Alex and I, both being filmmakers and photographers. The only way this was gonna get resolved 
would be a shootout. Are we done? I got cactus in my ass and my memory card's full. All right, let me just get a beer then. Easily my new favorite tree, the Baja elephant tree. It is unique to the Baja Peninsula. And it's so cool. The, the bark is amazing. Reminds me a little bit of an Arbutus tree, but wow, they're pretty. Our plan is to drive an off-road route from the desert town of Catavina to the Pacific coast across a portion of the Baja Divide Trail. What little we know about the actual route other than its approximate length was swept away by the knowing that it would take us to some of the most remote beaches in all of Baja. That alone was enough allure for us to pack enough provisions for a few days of travel and hit the dirt following the tiny line on our map. <laughs> all right, let's get after it. We've built a very capable truck, one that we have a lot of confidence in to do this type of remote overland travel. Things like this come at certain risk, however, when it's in a foreign country and without any real word on what lies ahead. So we would have to drive it to find out. Rattled open. You're hearing noises. Ah, yes. Everyone else look good? I think so. I think so. Quite rattly. Yeah. yeah. Corrugations are our arch nemesis. And there's a lot of them. The road revealed some of its challenges within the first few miles. And for our rig aging nearly half a century, it was gonna make things very interesting. For now, a constant watch on the vitals of the engine and the symphony of creaks and cracks from the camper would be our move. I think that looks like a nice spot for lunch. So we've gone, I think, 30 or 40 miles into the route. We're about a third of the way mm -hmm. to the water. And it's awesome out here. 
It's beautiful. It's surprisingly so green, which is really refreshing. Yeah. It's like a cactus forest. Mm -hmm. It is a cactus forest. Mm -hmm. And there's like these little stops on the way, which is really nice. Mm -hmm. It's the pooper. Perhaps opening unknown doors in strange places isn't the wisest idea. Cacti known as cardones stand above two stories tall and age over a hundred years. Underneath the giants lay the abstract forms of cacti we can only describe as Dr. Seuss-like. The tall gangly tree known as a boojum tree curls in almost perfect Whoville fashion. Slow going in our old rig, but the Chinook handles the terrain well, even when the road seemingly washes away completely. tell you that we're at the El Chileno Rancho, but they're telling you instead. Would you consider staying here for the night? But we also really want to get to the ocean today. Send us a picture of you with this sticker. We will send you something cool. Something cool. I don't know what yet, but something. We'll send you Matthew. <laughs> Despite the setting sun, we decided to make a big push to get to the coast tonight. Fighting the light of dusk and the bumpy terrain, we made our attempt. to the ocean.
Waking up to the sound of waves for us West Coasters felt like home, and it made the grueling seven hour drive the previous day all worth it. If the coastal portion of this route was going to be anything like the inland part, we knew we had to keep driving. Exploring secluded beaches on the coast of Baja sounded like a pretty good way to start the day. I think we found our beach spot. Yeah. Pretty nice. I'll wait for a wave. <laughs> the ocean has a profound way of clearing the mind and calming the heart. This part of the Pacific made us feel right at home. Friends, fresh tropical fruit is the best. I don't know what else to call it. Oh my gosh. This one is banana mango star fruit. Oh, that's my new favorite for sure. Stacy found some treasures. Matthew says I'm only allowed to take one home. One from each beach? No, I'm taking more. That's... It's too much to... We're gonna fill our entire truck. Yeah. They're really pretty. The thing about traveling an off-road route like this in Baja is there's no one coming to your rescue. Even with satellite communication, it would take days for someone to come and recover us if something were to happen. 
Because of this remoteness, we had to apply an extra level of caution on section of roads where risk was involved. As we meandered down the coastal portion, we never found ourselves too far from a spot that required careful spotting and careful tire placement. This would become an increasingly popular routine as the route became more challenging. For now, we had a few more epic beaches to enjoy. Stacy has quickly become the queen of guac. And we're also pretty good at finding lunch spots. Everything is fossil, it's like <laughs> everywhere. This whole cliff. This whole cliff, like what? what? Like this entire ledge.
The previous day had left us inspired, from the treasures we found to the incredible beaches that we explored. But the road was also more slow going than we had anticipated, and we did not make it as far as we had planned. This meant an extra night on the trail and a longer and more grueling drive for today. Still unaware of what laid ahead, we started our 55 kilometer drive back to the highway. About three quarters of the way through our route, and we are officially traveling inland again, leaving the ocean. Yes, our noses are pointing to the highway. It's real. Yeah, it'll be, it'll be great to feel some highway kilometers. This road has been exceptionally awesome and also exceptionally bumpy. Yeah. And if you've driven any Baja back roads, you know all about that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There, every time I get out of the vehicle after a good section of the drive, I'm like <laughs> seasick. Um, but it is sad. It's sad to be leaving the ocean. I feel like every corner was an even more beautiful cove. So. I just couldn't help flying the drone. I put it up every two seconds because every beach is so beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. The truck's been doing awesome. Honestly, it's mm -hmm. just really impressed us. It's kind of taken a bit of a, a beating already. And but we're alone. We have not seen anyone. Yeah, other than like a few fishermen. Locals. Yeah. You can tell this route, at least it feels like it's definitely mostly locals only. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's very, I mean, surprisingly maintained to an, to an extent, but I mean, I mean, the roads exist. Yeah, they're there. You won't see a lot of sprinter vans out here though. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's crazy. What, like ha what having a vehicle like this can show you though, because yeah. I mean, we're not at a beach jam packed with RVs right now. Like we've been alone this whole time, which is really special. Yeah. All right. Time to go find some more wild parts of Baja. Yep. Got to crush the last 60, <laughs> 70 kilometers of inland driving. We'll see how that goes. <laughs> Well, if we thought we had seen the worst of the roads, we were definitely in for a few surprises. You gotta keep your uh, wits about you out here. <laughs> Just be driving along and all of a sudden the road's gone. <laughs> is very off camber. Looks like we can kind of go down. Looks like a few other people have gone down into this ditch. It'll be a little bit more like flexy, but I'd prefer that to how off camber this gets, especially up there. Let me zoom in and see that. How's the uh, last leg of the trail going, Stace? It's just the longest leg. <laughs> oh man, it's one of those things where we were at the ocean and we were really excited about like being on the highway again, and now this road is taking so long. We're out of food. <laughs> I think our average speed is like. Oh gosh. Five, ten m kilometers, miles an hour. Not even. Maybe. That's a lot. Man, I never thought I'd say I'd be excited to see a highway. It doesn't look bumpy on camera, but wow. It's bumpy. Here comes 
cool. Wow. Just enjoying the sun, huh? It looks like we are eating cactuses for dinner tonight because the sun is setting and this is not a trail that we are willing to drive in the dark. We had made it about 30 kilometers of our approximate 60 kilometers left of the highway. So again, it was gonna leave us one more day on this crazy road. One of those roads that's easy to love and also easy to hate <laughs> like also hard, really really hard to hate because it's so beautiful and that's what gets us every time there's one section on that shelf road where we were coming around the corner there's like a brief gopro clip of it when i was like oh i'm gonna film the daisies <laughs> don't film the daisies and just on the corner of the shelf road driver's side drop there was a huge pothole like where the road was just eroded and the back driver tire dropped into it, lifted the front passenger tire off the ground. I just hit the gas because I was like, the cliff's over there. Mm -hmm. So I just hit the gas and it like lurched forward like this. And the whole camper was just like, grr, 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 grr. Oh, not yet. Oh God. There's like, we know, I know. I have to be reassured that the camper is attached to the chassis quite often. Because I, at some points in that drive, I thought it was just like. Gonna it, fall off the back. Gonna fall off, that our, our house is just going to be rolling <laughs> in this unique fashion down the hill. All right, let's enjoy this sunset.
The morning of day five. On our expected two to three day excursion, it felt like maybe we were never gonna get off this trail and we should just create a homestead here in the middle of Baja. Yet again, we set out into the unknown territory. And at this point, we were expecting to be surprised. <laughs> Well, the surprises didn't take long. At last, we were closing the gap between the dirt road and the pavement. This trip was incredible. What was planned to be two to three days turned into five, and we feel like we've accomplished something great. What was supposed to be an off-road route to the ocean very quickly found a spot in our memory bank for when we gave in to the adventure. We had no choice but to surrender to the unknown, and it turned out to be the best decision that we've made on this trip so far. <laughs> Touching a whale has been a lifelong childhood dream and I am so happy <laughs> to be fulfilling it in Baja.
It's quesadillas tonight, friends. And we're stoked about it. After fulfilling whale watching dreams in Guerrero Negro and stopping in the inland town of San Ignacio, we're heading across Baja again to meet some friends on the Sea of Cortez. What we didn't know yet is that this isn't the last we're going to see of San Ignacio on this trip. Well, we're about to get some very exciting work done on Mr. Sunday the Chinook. While our truck's getting some work done on it, we thought it would be fun to show you what it's really like in a small Mexican town in inland Baja. These fellows who run the car wash are casual experts when it comes to bodywork. And when they quoted us on doing our fenders, we immediately said yes. They cut out the rust, welded in new metal, matched the body lines perfectly, and now our Cruiser Chinook is rust free. And we are feeling real good about that. Thank you guys. Oh, right there, dang.
welcome to the sea and riverside town of Mulahe. It's a little bit sketch. Getting a little precarious. a beautiful little gem of Baja. It has so much charm and it's surrounded by beautiful bays and the river, which sadly often floods and wipes out a lot of infrastructure. Luckily for us, we got to see it in its prime. Our zigzag continues inland towards San Javier. Just when we think the landscapes of Baja are predictable, we're surprised once again. Yes, greetings everyone. Hello, hello. Yep, thank you for having us. Hello. This is very healthy looking cattle. Yeah, wow. The San Javier Mission stands tall in the center of town and holds many lifetimes of stories. When we arrive, the doors are closed, but we enjoy gazing at the exterior as the afternoon hummingbirds begin their feed along the walls that are freckled with flowers. This place is special. Chasing the setting sun, it was time to find camp. To start a great day is by watching the sunrise. <sighs> huh. Well, the sun's already up. I mistimed that a little bit. This olive tree is actually one of the first olive trees to be cultivated here in Baja, California. 
it's estimated to be three to four hundred years old. It's pretty cool. Where are the olives, Stace? Are you waiting? As for the theme of this entire Baja journey so far, we are finding it so comforting to be inland and that has seriously surprised us. We thought Baja was all about the beaches. Um, I mean, the beaches are incredible. They're beautiful. We haven't even seen the best beaches so far, but we just keep getting called into the mountains and into these lush, small towns and it's really special here. Following the vague directions of the ranch owner, we would tag along with our new friend Michael down an off-road route in hopes to find an oasis. The success of this will be purely determined by chance, as the route is very unclear. The translation from the rancho owner on where the oasis is only found us the direction and gave us no information on the quality of the road or if the road actually existed for vehicles. As per usual, we would have to drive it to find out. With Michael making quick work of the terrain in the 60 series, it was time for the big Chinook. boulders got bigger and the tracks disappeared so we put our sandals in four-wheel drive to enjoy a quick swim at this tropical creek.
apple teeth. Yum. So we we found this little oasis on our way up to the mission and told ourselves that we were gonna come here on the way back. And there is this perfect little tub and stairs that was made yes, now do a dive. by someone. Yeah. Sploosh. Do a flip. <laughs> and it's the perfect temperature on a hot day. Oh. Yes, sir. That's a refreshing thing. <laughs> yes, sir. This exquisite peninsula is 1,200 kilometers long and hosts 3,000 kilometers of coastline. It's a land of contrasts, where the desert meets the sea and where rugged mountains give way to pristine beaches. But Baja is more than just a landscape. It's a place where cultures have blended for centuries, creating a unique identity that is part Mexican, part Californian, and part indigenous. It's world-class surf breaks, it's hidden oases, remote villages, and vibrant cities make up the magic of Baja. Join us in this story of sun, sand, and adventure. And today, we'll be starting with a rock crawl to a beautiful hidden oasis. Toyota World Runners is proudly presented by Westcan Overland Off-Road Design. Today we are joined by Michael in his awesome 60 Series Land Cruiser, which you'll get to see quite a bit more of. He's outfitted his truck well for this type of travel, and he's welcomed some other friends with him today to join us on an epic hike. It may just be ego, but driving our trucks past where most people park gives us a sense of sureness that we built our rigs for the right reasons. Being able to go the last 10% where others can't is part of the joy of owning a four-wheel drive. Our Chinook is nearly 50 years old. Built in 1976, it never saw any type of driving like this before we built it. The 80 series Land Cruiser chassis that we put it on seems to love this type of terrain and it easily and naturally crawls over these rocks. The weight of the Chinook ever makes it hilarious and interesting, along with the symphony of sounds that go with all our gear moving around in the back as we travel. Even in two-wheel drive, it's amazing how capable this truck is. With our tires aired down and so much weight over the rear axle, it's almost as if the locker's engaged. Michael, however, is showing us that you don't need to have the biggest tires or the most insanely built truck to come to these remote spots. A bit of a lift, some good tires, and good driving will get you a long way. Further than most, I might add. Both of our trucks seemingly laugh at the terrain and scream, old trucks rule, in their own way. The boulder field has led us to the mouth of this gorgeous slot canyon that to be able to hike, you must also swim. This is exactly the type of adventure that we've been longing for. All six of us make our way up the slot canyon with drone, camera, and snacks in tow. We are quickly gifted the task of taxiing our belongings over our heads as we climb up into the following pools. It's a slot canyon jungle gym scattered with surprise palm trees, songbirds, and friendly frogs. The pools range from bathwater to refreshing as the canyon narrows.
we're all elated with its breathtaking beauty and playful experience. As we come to the final pool, we all wish we had more time and more light to turn around and do it again. It seems you'll never know what you'll find in Baja. From its rugged mountains, vast deserts, canyons, and fertile valleys, these landscapes are bathed in warm golden light as the sun sets and changes their hues. This desert canyon oasis has been an absolute gem of Baja. Hiking through there yesterday was such a treat. I've never done anything like that and it was rad. Super fun. Today, we first have to rock crawl our way back down this canyon and then we're going to find another gem of Baja. Surprise. And that one is going to be again on the Sea of Cortez and I'll give you a hint. It's a beach. However, the road to get there is gonna be one of the more insane routes that we've done. So, yeah, the canyon is pretty great. It was unreal. Unreal. <laughs> Exceeded our expectations once again. Good typical, job, Baja. Typical Baja. Stacy's seemingly endless pursuit to feed the wild burrows has become a rather interesting and enjoyable game. Her joy is nothing short of contagious. It wasn't long on the pavement before we were airing down our tires for one of the most scenic and epic drives that we have done on this entire peninsula. The best things in life are free. The best things in life don't come easy. The best things in life are shared. The best things in life wake your heart up. The best things in life are worth fighting for. The best things in life are the ones you least expect. Our elevation drops around 600 meters via a windy, potholed, loose gravel, make you want to smile, cry, vomit, hold your breath the entire way, Mexican shelf road. I am gifted the opportunity to drive this road so that Matthew could get the entire road view from the drone. I take very small peeks at the view in between laser focus navigating, but try not to get distracted. It is taking everything inside me not to force Matthew to drive the rest of the way down, but there's a small fire in the pit of my stomach attempting to torch that fear. We keep going, and once the road flattens, I must admit, I'm proud of myself. This last stretch before a destination is the most risky. Getting salt water on our vehicle is the last thing that we want. Trying to time a rising tide, we make the attempt to cross the rocks.
I think everybody probably has a different idea of paradise. This is pretty close to ours. <laughs> Well, tonight, since we're at an epic beach, it's time to make an epic meal, and this one was inspired to us by our new friends, Carissa and Lindbergh, who you may know from Gone Durton. We didn't buy the rice cooker yet, so we're cooking rice in a pot, but we are gonna make tuna poke bowls. to awesome rice is rice vinegar. A quick saute of just the peppers. I'm not sure when showing what you eat became part of the Overlanders That's filmmaker awesome. assignment, but we're pretty proud of this that was one. So good. That was perfect. It feels like we found our rhythm, where we can travel for a few days and then spend a couple days resting and enjoying getting to know a place. What you got there, Stace? Nope. Michael and his genie pot. Yep. Guy's such a coffee addict. Look at him. Look at him. He's been walking with that French press for like 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. It's our French press. Yeah, we're, we're the coffee addicts. My dude. Wow. With all this fine French cuisine French. floating around, <laughs> it felt necessary to get in a beach workout. Creating habits on the road can be challenging, but when you've got someone to hold you accountable, it makes all the difference. Just look at this perfect, blue water and a quiet beach. Everyone told us that it was going to be packed and there's some other people in the little cove next to us and we have our little cove all to ourselves. Stacy's currently way out there in the pack raft. What's on the menu tonight? Uh, is it a surprise? Yes, tonight we're having tacos. This is the first time of the entire trip. Uh, it's also new to Mexico. New to Mexico? Like Mexico doesn't have tacos? They don't have tacos. We're bringing it to Mexico. Wow. Wow. <laughs> God. <laughs> If you're enjoying this content and want to see more of us as we drive the Pan America Highway, 
please consider smashing that like button and subscribe if you aren't already. You got the white knuckles holding on a tie, keeping your feelings bottled up inside. Head in for a collision in the night. To really live, you gotta die. Breathe in, breathe out. Hey, thanks for the company, man. Hey, man. We'll see you again on the Pan Am. You'll catch up. I'll try. Yeah. Until next time, amigo. So we've been at this beach spot here for five days now. This is the longest Stacy and I have ever stayed in one place camping, either on this trip or otherwise. The beach is actually completely empty now. There are a few families here for Semana Santa and now that's over, we've had the entire place to ourselves. And there's something really special about this beach. Local secret perhaps. I'm sure there's lots of travelers that also know about it. There's no signs. There's no trail, and it only happens at super, super low tide. There's Sunday, way over there. Any guesses what's in this tide pool? Wow. <laughs> As far as uh, spots go to have your morning coffee. Oh my god, no! None. None? Yeah. What? There's probably a sip. Oh, guys, that Why are was. Are you walking around? That was an absolute tragedy. I was going to turn the camera off. Uh, After the casualty of our favorite morning beverage, we knew it was time to go. Thankfully, the tide was lower for our return, which made crossing the rocks next to the ocean much less stressful. Driving the Chinook off-road is so much fun. It feels like an anomaly. It feels like it's against nature watching this old RV with giant tires roll over rocks. I don't know, something about it is just really cool. had to come to an end eventually. I just don't know if we were prepared to leave its familiar essence. The peninsula brought something new around every dusty corner. The food had us saying yum at most hours of the day, and the people made us sure of our return. Our final week was spent intentionally taking a break from being behind the camera, 
and enjoying things exclusively with our eyes and our hearts. It wasn't long before we found ourselves at the TMC cargo ferry check-in. It's Friday at 1 p.m. and we are following the other semi-trucks heading towards the port.